Scramble. Scramble. Alright, motherfucker, tell me about Leiden. Leiden. That, it's, that's the studio that did that fucking the Berserk anime. Oh. That people, that people shit all over, man. Oh. They, they do, so they're known the, like, for horrible CG, CG one? dude. Didn't they, doesn't that mean they also they did... They did Terraformers uh, as well. They also see. did Hanibato. Yeah, hell yeah. I liked um, Hanibato. Which looked amazing. Yeah, but, I liked Hanibato uh, a lot. Well, it had its moments. Yeah. Um, sometimes it was good, sometimes it was pretty average. Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna go through their stuff here. Something called Woodpecker Detective's Office, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Other Side Picnic, that was a show from a couple seasons ago. I, I think that uh, Other Side Picnic had decent animation. Uh, Suppose Kid from The Last Dungeon Boonies moved him to Star Town, that one had decent animation. I don't know that I'd recommend it, I fell off after three, but it's fine. I think their animation- Sells at work, Code Black. I say that their animation got better as they went on, but... Yeah, I don't think Tokyo Revengers has killer animation. Yeah, there's Berserk. I believe, didn't, uh, hang on. Now, I gotta find this one, because I remember hearing a thing that the team that did the Berserk, uh, so they produced that one, but it says here, didn't do the animation. Oh, okay, okay. So... The, there's two teams for animation on this, and one of them is Gemba, who did Berserk and the Magnificent Kotobuki, which also, I felt, had some not great CG. Uh, and then another team here, yes, uh, Milipensi, which I'm absolutely saying wrong, uh, also uh, worked on Berserk and Saw My Spider So What, which is a show that's still ongoing and I need to catch up on very badly. But yeah, so... There's a bit of a pedigree <laughs> going into these, is what yeah. we're saying. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to comparing those shows and seeing how we feel about them. So, Roger, you got anything to say else to say about uh, Snow White Notes and or Tokyo Revengers? Not really, dude. Dude, I I am truly shocked. So, spoiler alert for Tokyo Revengers. I'm shocked that you didn't just bust a gut when I oh, brought yeah. up that bit where Homeboy had a. So basically, dude is having a showdown with these two dudes, these two guys who are, like, having a fight, and they're breaking all his shit. It's, dude, it's because and I he, was trying desperately to care about his shit getting broken. <laughs> and then, Yeah, I mean, I felt like all of that, I felt like none of that was supposed was to like, really make you care. boy is, like, 21, and he's about to cry well, over see, this bat. That's the thing, it's his, it's his precious memories, Roger. That's yeah. the thing is, I don't think you were meant to care about that. I think it was all meant to be funny. Because, like, as the shit's flying through the air, he's like, no, that's the bat I hit that home run with. <laughs> no, that's my bicycle I've had since I was right. 10. <laughs> no, that's my whatever. Like, it's so back to back to back. Yeah, it's that like part obviously is funny. funny. It's, like, it's like whenever he goes down and he, he knees down and he's about to cry yes, over it. Yes, he gets so mad, which is when it happens. It's all laughs. But he's so mad that he tries to fight these dudes. They just duck out of the way of his punches because he's a little baby boy who can't fight. He falls into a big pile of garbage, crawls out of the pile of garbage, kneels down so angry. He's like, "I just, you guys just fight and fight. You don't even realize how much your fighting hurts other people. And then Mikey looks down and says, Takumichi, I, I just, I never, do you know that? You've had a turd in your hair this whole time. <laughs> and it was funny, yeah. And he looks up, and there's just a straight, a straight up baby Ruth in his fucking hair. <laughs> just a straight up solid fucking turd in his hair. And it actually is a turd. It's pretty fucking funny. I'm, I was shocked you didn't bust into laughter when I brought that up when I got here. God, it just didn't hit me, man. Ah, uh, I thought that was funny. I was I was I was watching that you, shit dude, on my lunch break today, just rolling. Left and right, dude, this show falls flat for me. I guess so. It, I, I mean, and yet we still called a streamer. What's yeah. that doing? Yeah, yeah. I, I still think it's like I said. I think it has good highs. I I think I'm higher on it than you were. I, I think, think so. I think so. And I'm still not convinced on this animation because I was watching clips and I was like, I don't see it. Like usually when it's obviously CG, I'm like looking at someone go like. Womp, womp, I like wouldn't say that it's obviously CG. I would say that it is CG. I mean, I don't know. I just didn't see it at all, I guess. Like, it, there's literally, like, I'm watching the clip where they're walking through the festival, and it's like, it just looks like animation. It shows them, like, talking from the side, and instead of just being, like, a mouth going like that on a body, like, like there's actually a gap you can see in yeah. your lips. And I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, I, I think I'm just not seeing what you're seeing. 
I, I don't you got them good ass. I don't think it's like more or less the the face, the facial expressions or anything. Okay, it's the bodies as a whole. See, that's what I was asking. Like, is it when they're fighting that you really notice it? Because there's a couple fights. It's just that... when they're moving that okay. I notice it. I don't know. I'm not seeing it at all. Weird. I don't know. Uh, I'll watch. I'll, I'll try to pay more attention now. I guess now that you said that. But um, yeah, I'm still into the both both these shows. Yeah, it's okay. I still. I I am shocked, dude. You, you really thought I was going to give a... No, I am shocked that you did not realize that this is a grown-ass adult talking to Yeah, a... I definitely... That's definitely something that... That's definitely a Brandon moment that I should have... I should have been... And normally... I should have been like, you know... And here's the thing is like, this guy is a grown-ass adult. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah, and I like... Normally it's the Didn't other... even catch it. Yeah, normally didn't it's even the other it. way around. I'm like, I just hmm, didn't even think about I it. I did not even think of it he like that. He spent so much time in his teenage body that I just think of him as the teenager now. Yeah. If, but you're right. He absolutely is just a grown ass dude who like mind time traveled back into his teenage body. Yeah, and now he's macking on his ex girlfriend as a 13 year old. I mean, as much as a lame little. I mean, to be as, fair, as, as much as a baby back bitch, baby boy like him can mack on someone, yeah. he is. I mean, he's mostly just like. Also, where the fuck are these people's parents? Nah, hell nah. No. He parents. comes home, dude. They, he gets a shit beat out of him repeatedly. Where? Are his parents? Daddy wasn't there <laughs> to change my underwear. <laughs> this show is goofy, dude. Yeah, I don't hate it though. I mean, I don't. I don't the, mo the thing I, don't I hate, hate it either. The thing I hate most about it is those absolutely batshit insane leaps of logic they make. But I, think, I mean, barring you know, those, I'm into it. I think between the two shows uh, that we reviewed, those Snow White notes and Tokyo Avengers, I think those Snow White notes is the better show yeah and shockingly enough i'm gonna agree with you even though i called it a yeah. steamer i think it's i think it's a more enjoyable show i don't i think it's easier i think i'm more i think tokyo revengers is the more like easy to watch yeah. if that makes any sense right if that makes any sense more digestible all. because it's yeah more, you, you like you can at least relate to it in the sense that we've seen you know delinquent anime and stuff yeah. like that before i tell you i i am I'm really thinking about these, you know, we always say it's a review of a recommendation, and I do take that into account. I'm definitely giving it more thought of how I would recommend it lately because a couple of my friends at work uh, recently, like, got into anime. And so all of a sudden we're just talking about it. Oh, whenever you should we're, tell them check out our podcast. We got I've told them about it. I've told them about it. Shout out to <laughs> Javi and Liz. But, uh, yeah, the whole thing started because one of my coworkers, which, again, not in my department, which is why I'm working every goddamn day forever, uh, but... Um, Boy, one of my coworkers. Sucks, don't it? Yeah, it sucks to suck. You know, I'm over here sucking. I don't I know it. Um, but one of my coworkers, uh, she was invited by another one of my coworkers, a close friend of hers, to go and see the um, uh, Demon Slayer Demon movie? Slayer movie. And she did. She was like, "Okay, what's Demon Slayer? I'm down." But what's Demon Slayer? She's like, it's this anime. So she like slammed through the whole thing on Netflix, and then they went and saw the movie, and she really enjoyed both. And then she was talking about, we were talking about it to you. I was like, oh, I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to wait till it's streaming. She's like, oh man, there's these bits where it like gets all emotional. I was a little choked up. I was like, dog, you think that'll choke you up? You should check out this Violet Evergarden. A couple weeks later, she's back. Dude, I watched Violet Evergarden. I was like, holy shit. So like all of a sudden we're all just talking about anime. I got them both to watch uh, uh, A Silent Voice. Again, We I found people who love to cry as much as I do. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> And now I'm like giving them more recommendations, Chef. I fucked up though, because I mentioned to to Liz, I was like, oh man, we watched this show for the fucking podcast. It's absolutely absurd. I just don't even know about Liz, this. I mean, it's so wild. If you're listening to this, please allow me to recommend you Domestic Girlfriend. Oh my God. Anyway, <laughs> hang on. So I'm telling her, like, this fucking show, I don't even know, man. It's so wild. And she's like, what's it about? I was like, there's like these fairy dudes. <laughs> And I tell her about Fairy Run Maru, and like I show her some some clips from it, like uh, like the ice boy, the water boy transforming and shit. And she's like, "Whoa, that's so wild!" I was like, "You gotta respect him for going for it, but like, I don't think it's good." And then like a couple days later, I'm in the break room, and Javi comes in. He's like, "Yo, what's that show you're telling Liz about?" I was like, "Which one?" There was a few. He's like, "It's like with the dudes." And I was like, "Oh," and I tell him about, it, and he's like, "Oh my god!" It's like this is the one that that they're really glomping on and i swear to christ two days later this girl i don't even really talk to at the job she was like hey what was that show you were telling javi about the other day and i was like 
Well, there's a few of them. He's like, something about fairy guys. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> it's the fairy and Mara, dude. It's a fucking, fucking curse. Dog, I don't even want to recommend it. I keep telling them there's like maybe five good minutes per episode, but it's mostly kind of trash. And they're like, they just, like, I tell them about it and they, they, I show them and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I guess, I guess watch Fairy Renmaru. Yeah. Um, if if you guys are listening, watch Domestic Girlfriend. If you God. if you want a real good, real good, I'm not gonna call it a shit show, <laughs> but it's just a mm, spicy meatball. I may, may, I mean, you I gotta, mean, if you if you're if you're traveling into smut, if you're watching Fairy Renmaru, you should at least give Domestic Girlfriend a chance. I guess the fuck so, man. That show is some shit. Um, anyway, but yeah, I've told, I've told him about a few things, uh, different shows, um, fucking Sarah's on my and shit. I'm like, yo, this is maybe the best show I've ever watched. Like legit, like there's a bunch, but I- I'm finally like actually having conversations with people about shows and recommending them. So it's, it's becoming like more dire, I guess, when I'm thinking about these shows, would I really recommend this or not? So it's something like I'm actually like I've always thought about it, but I'm also like, but I like this one. So now I'm like really thinking about it more, you know, mm. it's it's uh, I don't know. We'll see if it cha- how much it changes my review style. There you go. What do you, th- what do you think could happen to your review style? Just become Roger. <laughs> It just you get Tur- a li- turns out I love domestic girlfriend. Yeah, oh just, man, you, you get a, oh, no. uh, you get a, you relax a little more. Hey man, that might bring that might bring you know domestic girlfriend up you know point five points or whatever. That that'd be a good seven for you. Yeah, I don't know. Did I really? I gave it a six. I and think a half. you gave it six point five. Yeah, you just really remember that shit, huh? I think so. You sack of shit. What did I give it? I don't know, probably like a nine. Yeah, <laughs> you sack of shit. And I would have gave it. Bro, a 10. that show is like. Listen, it's hot garbage, but it's very hot garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like very... It's molten garbage. Oh, yeah. baby. <laughs> it's a dumpster fire. Like, Woo! <laughs> I do believe I've caught the vapors. <laughs> You're terrible. You're terrible. Roger, I have a question uh, that burns within my very soul, and I must know the answer. <sighs> what have All you right, been watching? Goldie. <laughs> um, well, first, you know, Megalobox. Hell hot yeah. fire. Hell hottest yeah. fire show of the season. I don't fucking I was actually care. just telling uh, Liz about that one earlier. It's so damn good. It's like... It, there are... Sometimes I see shows. Mm-hmm. Sarah's on my... You mentioned that one. That comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mob Psycho comes to mind. Mm-hmm. That are so transcendent. That are so fucking good. Mm-hmm. That I will never... I can't think of a single time that I will never be able to recall that show. And mm-hmm. and no, you know, like I will never be able to say, hey, this this show's all right. Maybe like you when you check when it you out. think of in your brain best animes, it's like these are the names that come to mind. Megalobox is punching its way up to the it fucking is punching top. on up, yeah. Because this second season, like motherfucking Ryu with that show, Ryu can just yeah, Rrr! yeah, it's Ken. He's got the fire around. Oh dude. hell yeah! This show is so fucking good. It's so emotional. It's so impactful. The characters are written so well. It's it's kicking I'm ass. Attached to all of them, the villain is great. Mm-hmm. It's just the way they've put everything together this season mm-hmm. is way beyond what they did in the first season. Yeah, that I was telling. Not to say that the first season was oh, bad. First season decent. I was actually having this conversation earlier because I was talking about like the show in season two, and it's like got all this stuff, and it's got this kick-ass like sorrowful guitar closer mm-hmm. and all this stuff. Everything about it. And it was like, the first season is very good, but it was basically a video game. It's like, you got to get through this guy and this guy to get to this guy to get to that guy to get that guy. And it's good. But the second season is just taking that, stripping it to its more base form, and then just making it so much darker and sadder. It packs it with emotion. Yeah, it's very, it's very well done. This show definitely feels like it it has a chance of Mm -hmm. making me cry. Oh, yeah, it could. It, it could come out of nowhere, man, because, uh, I mean, last episode had the, the story, and you, you did make the point that it was kind of on the nose. And, yes, it was on the it's nose. It's a little on the nose. But, damn, they took the time do- to also write, works. like, a whole-ass story for this episode. I mean, have you have you looked up the lyrics to the ending theme? 
Uh, no, I have not. That's it, baby. They're talking about the 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 hummingbird and everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a, it's the motif through the whole thing. Chief had it on his shoulder. Like everything about this is yeah, is Mac, coming back to Mac this. Mac obviously has some tie with this hummingbird. Yeah, it's all this motif, man. It's all it's like really it's like it reminds me of a very good video game soundtrack where like you get those little like bars, that little moment that like you hear it in this song, you hear it in the villain's theme, you hear it yeah. in the hero's theme. Like this little and moment also, and you're getting this little bit in there that like you're noticing the same patterns and like where it ends up, I'd I can't foresee them dropping the ball. Man, I hope not, but yeah. it could happen. And but just, it's to, really just to be good clear, so I talked about the, uh, the it having a good villain. I do not think that Mac is the villain. Oh, no. God, no. No, he's not the villain. No, of course um, not. It's that other dude with the kitty mouth. <laughs> yeah. I, Dude, I, Mac, that character is good, dude. Okay, but let me ask you this. So this is a thing I wanted to... I, I almost asked you earlier when we were not on mic, and I was like, no, I got to get this on mic. So, season one. But the whole time, making you think Joe's gonna die in the ring. Does he yeah. have to now? I don't think so. I don't know if he has to, but it kind of feels like he has to. Yeah. Because how do you seeing where it's going? And we're, we'll try not to mention anything here. We don't want to get too spoiler on a show that's not over yet. But I don't. I don't think they're gonna give up the. I don't think they're gonna give up the show that easily. I don't know. I don't know. But like I mean it's got you thinking. I'm thinking about like seeing what the villain that we're we're calling him the villain. He's a villain in my eyes anyway. What he wants, how close he is to getting it. How do you fuck that up? How do you make sure he doesn't get what he wants? You have to show that this thing he's doing doesn't work in a very significant way. And if homeboy goes Mac time real hard that's it right yeah you see what I mean but I think it's you know like I think there's more of a chance on him going Mac time on not so much Joe like he might go in there and Joe will survive it it's gonna be somebody more innocent mm, that can't defend okay, themselves okay okay yeah I see where you're going uh, cause he almost went Mac time on his child yee 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 yeah, this is uh also could, his child could... has this gaping scar on his chest. Like mm -hmm. I'm like I feel for I feel for the guy, dude. Yeah, dude. It they're it's very these characters are very well written and I'm yeah. enjoying them. Yeah. Uh most of them. I still feel like they kind of made Sashio into a little shit stain, but also yeah. What are you going to do? But he's, you know, like slowly, you know, he, obviously, you still see where he's coming. Obviously, from. the story, too, is that he slowly wins them back over or whatever. I mean, maybe. And, and the last episode, you know, the other than Sacho, the last holdout, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. she showed up. Also, I didn't even know she was a girl in the first season. Yeah, me neither. Didn't and, realize. And damn, she's a cute girl. Aww, um, and, kids, and, you know, kids. she shows up and she's helping them hold down the. That whole scene was really good too. With a tarp and everything. Yeah. yeah, where they're trying to hold the gym that Joe slowly. Joe straight to up go. jumped off that fucking building to grab the rope. Ah, it's so cool. He's desperate to get back what he lost, and that is another thing that's so good about this show. Mm -hmm. You know, and Joe obviously is a different man. Like the the junkyard dog died at the beginning of the mm -hmm. series. Mm -hmm. You saw it happen. Yeah. You know, I'm half ass expecting that dog to be. You know, at the flash pan over to it. And the dog has climbed its way out of the grave or something. Jesus. Which also would still be pretty fucking dope. That would be sick. But, I mean, shit, dude. It, who knows? Wasn't that the thing in the first season that, like, Joe was the junk dog and it, Yuri was, like, the wolf, He was right? the trained wolf dog. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was the, you know, he was that, the domestic wolf. Maybe that wolf shows up. Hell yeah. <laughs> the wolf already showed up in the show. Hey, where was he? Uh, he was in the... Uh, uh, the area where they well, were yeah training. yeah yeah he was like he was like he was like, just being yeah, a yeah. good boy and he chased after those kids yeah yeah i mean like in a more uh less literal sense i guess yeah well it looks like you know the other good thing about megalobox is it looks like you know joe's ran over a hard patch it looks like yuri's headed there mm, yeah that's fair so there there's a lot of ground that they have that they can go and they can explore i don't think i really don't think that this would be the season that joe dies because there's going to be so much more they can do. There is, there, and yeah. if they want to keep firing on this cylinder, baby, I'm here for it. Do it as long as you need. I mean, we'll find out. We will find out. And when Joe dies, the more you drag it out, 
the better a chance you have of making my sorry ass cry. And that should be a goal to these animes these days. We're gonna we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna make this fat fuck cry. Don't mean shit if I cry. I cry at anything. <laughs> yeah. I can't watch I can't watch Adam Sandler's click without crying. That don't mean shit to me, boy. <laughs> anyway. Oh man. True story. Yeah. True story. Uh, Megalobox kills it though. It's, yeah. It is a good good show. It's good shit. It's such good shit. Yeah. Um anything else you've been checking out? Uh, I've caught up on MHA. I know I that you yet, have not, yeah. so we won't talk too much about it. But I'll try um, to get that done by next recording. Yeah, man. But uh, cool, uh, cool, cool happenings, you know, going on. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of neat mystery going on with Deku, and we're starting to get oh, some of it. Oh my god, there's the sleepies boy. coming oh, in. No, the sleepy we're starting boy. to get some of it. So um, just a sleepy. Boy. I'll be happy sleepy once the school arc is over and we're on to the the good shit. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing from people I know who have been watching the show. That like they are really, really, really just waiting for this this part to be done. And I'm like, I feel like, like I told you, it's doing the reverse of last season where the first half was like yeah. the serious, like, here's the villain, like, story thing. It had thing. a week, and in a week second, close. Yeah, the second half was, I liked it. I liked Gentle Criminal. Okay. Cat he wasn't the whole time. and Gentle Criminal. Oh, Gentle Criminal was great. You're nice. I liked, I liked Gentle Criminal and his assistant. La Brava. Yeah, La Brava. But I, I get it, man. I get why a lot of people fell off of it. Especially when you got so many other delectable snacks just laying around like Demon Slayer. I don't and like how you said that. <laughs> I did the fingers, too. Ugh. And Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, yeah. There's a I lot mean, of good stuff. There, there's there's plenty to go. That's Megalobot. A, that's another conversation I had with someone. They were telling me. I was like, you see any good shows lately? And they told me, uh, like, they had tried to watch MHA before but couldn't really get into it. And then, like, a bunch of their friends were like, hey, let's all watch MHA together. And so they're you know getting through it and i was like dude honestly watch mob psycho 100 Mm -hmm. just watch mob psycho 100 you'll you'll it's shorter and you'll have more fun yeah (laughs) like mha is great i love mha mob psycho 100 is a goddamn masterpiece yeah you want to watch mha at this point you start it and watch it because your friends are watching it and talking about it and they're into it that's that's what happened to me uh three seasons ago (laughs) yeah i came in on a good one though season three kicked ass yeah yeah it did at Uberworm. But, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm, I'm on episode seven or so of maybe eight of Vivi. Okay. Um, I'm still quite enjoying that one. I just now got to pick it back up. Uh, it is a... It is, dude, that show's a lot of fun. It's, it's uh, a better Tokyo Revengers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, but with less music than uh, Snow mm-hmm. White Notes. But um, yeah, I uh, I just caught up all the way on Vivi, uh, up to episode ten it is, uh, and I caught up on that one uh, yesterday mostly. Yeah. Um, man, it is doing some stuff. That's one where like I was watching it like, so you know they they do these little three episode arcs basically, and this last full arc we got through was one that like the first couple episodes I was like okay there's stuff happening interesting, but I was like not super into it and then it's that perfect example what what is it called when they fucking turn it on with the animation they're, the they're, sakuga sakuga baby when they turn it on they turn it the fuck on because episode nine has the i think the best fight i've seen in this show maybe the best fight like this season Dude, this sh- this show has good fights too. Holy shit! I mean, they turn it the fuck on. It's so good. Oh, oh, they hit it. It's very well done. Um, yeah, it whips all the ass. Uh, but that's the thing. It's one of those again where like, I'm. It's not like full on Fairy Ren Maru where like I just don't want to watch it except for these five minutes per episode. But it's one of those where like, if you just gave me that fight scene. I would, I would still love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's... Vivi's, Vivi's make moves, is what I'm yeah. saying. It's interesting stuff. And um, then, uh, other, other than the, the... Yeah, I think that's all I've watched other than the two we've watched for the... Uh, I almost crossed my mind. I almost felt like I did watch something else, but... Mm-hmm. I don't think I did. Mm-hmm. I don't think I did. Okay. 
If it, if I did, it'll pop to my mind and I'll scream it out. Maybe when I'm talking about what I've been watching. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but yeah, uh, so far, I mean, I'm enjoying the season. It is overwhelming. There's a lot. There's know? God. There's so much. And like the the streamers and steamers are making us watch so much more, which yeah. I don't I don't hate because this is stuff I might not normally have watched, and I am enjoying most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and with with the added workload and everything, and like we went up hours at work, so mm-hmm. like ah, I really liked. Uh, I'm. I keep saying I really like. I really liked it whenever I didn't have my job and doing the podcast, <laughs> and that makes it sound like I like the podcast less. Oh, baby! And it's not the fact that I love the podcast. I don't love working in the way that it makes me feel. Yeah, sometimes it'd be like that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get that paper. Sometimes, you know what I'm yeah. Sometimes, I mean, work can be fun, but. I don't know. I I have I definitely have a preference to what I would like to be doing. Yeah, man. And maybe we'll get there one day. We'll find out. Someday um, I know. Yeah. We too will go. We, we're gonna keep trucking. Some place that's green. And then until until that happens, uh, you'll find my ass up at the comic book store. Get in that new ass dank ass manga in. And or, push or, it, pushing all the cards. Or yeah, yeah. I uh, recently bought a four thousand dollar. I paid four thousand dollars for uh, some Pokemon cards. Jesus Christ! Yeah, man. Wait, you did or I didn't personally. I okay, used, fuck. I used the store's money. Baby, I almost had a heart attack. Oh, sorry. No, I did not. I did not have four thousand dollars to my name. Yeah, I was gonna say. I used. You holding out on me, motherfucker? <laughs> I used the <laughs> store's money to buy these Pokemon cards. And I've already made most of that back for the store in a oh, week. Yeah. Oh, I've meant to ask you: Did uh, the person you sold a card to, and they, uh, you forgot to give it to them? Did they come? back They did and get come back and get it. Okay, that's good. They, they didn't even realize that they forgot the card. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> oh man. Yep. Pretty fun, dude. Well, Brandon, I'm just waiting. You, you waiting? I'm just waiting. What's in the news? No, motherfucker. <laughs> ah. What have you been watching, sir? Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Let me tell you. Please tell me. A couple things. Um, Still ke- keeping up on Shadow's House. Uh, that show continues to be uh, pretty interesting. The last episode uh, threw a pretty big wrench into the Gully Works um, about, like, a certain character who you haven't been watching the shows. This means nothing mm-hmm. to you, but yeah, you find out. I mean, it raises so many questions about everything, basically. Uh, so it's pretty interesting, and I'm I'm interested to see where that goes. Still, still getting that anxiety with that one. You know, I don't know that we're gonna get a full story before the season's over, but we'll see. Uh, still keeping up on Pretty Boy Detective Club. Uh, you remember how I told you the one guy in there, they keep calling him a lolicon because he's got a prearranged marriage to a, uh, young girl. Mm-hmm. She showed up. She's a fucking, like, she... Is she a great character? Uh, I mean, she's only been in, like, a little bit of this last episode, but she basically appears to go everywhere in a straight-up, like, yukata. She looks like a tiny princess, and... When she is walking, uh, our main girl is like our main character. Excuse me. I keep calling her a girl. They call her a boy. I should call her a boy. Um, it's about as close as you can get to saying your main character is trans without actually saying your main character is trans. But our main character uh, is standing in the path of in 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 this little girl's path, and she absolutely rips into him <laughs> and like tells him to move aside, calls him a peon and a peasant, and absolutely just verbally destroys this motherfucker and finally she, uh, she's just like this is why I hate being around you uh, mortals or something like that and I'm like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> it's, I kind of I kind of I don't know I don't know what's happening but I kind of love it it's like damn bitch all right tell me how you really feel about it um yeah I don't know uh, caught up on Vivi. We already talked about that. Took your Snow White notes. I am still watching Fairy Ren Maru as much shit as I talk about it. Uh, I told you they do them in order, and I was like, next episode's gonna be Water Boy. Nope. They got me on for two more because they mixed it up and put pl- uh, Flower Boy, then Water Boy. So I had to watch two more episodes, and now I'm like, there's only like three left. I'll just finish it. Fuck. But um, yeah. Odd Taxi continues to be pretty great. Um,. How, you, you haven't watched any more of that one? Mm-mm. All right. I want to, but... Man, if you find the time, 
There's a lot That's of a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, that is the struggle. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff happening on that one. If you if you don't end up finishing it, um, I mean, let me know if you want me to spoil it for you. But I am enjoying what's happening on that show. Um, there's a lot of things happening that, I mean, I don't really want to talk it about. It looks really good, man. Yeah. And I know that it's getting deeper. Yeah, it's getting pretty deep. Um, and, and like in some cases, just very serious, very dire, like some of the stakes that are being presented. Um, but I can't really talk about it. But if you manage to catch up, cool. If you don't, it's cool, man. Uh, whatever. It's all good. Uh, last one that I caught up on is To Your Eternity. I finally managed to catch up on that one. Man, this fucking show. Uh, it's making some moves. It's doing some stuff. We have seen the character who is the narrator, who I assume, I still assume is God or perhaps some kind of, uh, I don't know, sorcerer. But... It's the one who like said he dropped this this character mm -hmm. dropped the orb down to earth and it did this and it's did that. And he's he's uh, talking about what's happening the whole time. When you finally see the character, which you do very briefly, um, and in the intro, of course, uh, but you see the character and it looks like just it looks like fucking Lord Voldemort. Like he's a very pale dude, weird eyes, shrouded in this black cloak, like you can barely see his face and shit. But it's like dog are you the devil <laughs> yeah i don't know it's pretty wild um but also so when i last left off on that when it was episode three uh i have since caught all the way up and i had this is another conversation i had earlier when i was talking about this because again i have friends who love to cry as much as i do I told them yo this fucking show episode five i know it's good if i tear up i know it's real good if the tear falls down my cheek and rolls down this one was a full streaker we had heavy like tears from all corners of my eyes going all the way down baby episode five made me cry real hard that's good shit <laughs> that's that good shit uh this show is uh i've seen it described online as a good way to have a bad time and i cannot agree more if you are into a very emotionally moving thing that will probably make you cry real fucking hard. And I'll tell you, I had that moment spoiled for me by some dude at work who I now know to never talk about anime with again. But like, I literally told him, I was like, oh yeah, I've been watching that one. I'm on episode three. It's like, you met, uh, you already met this character? I was like, yeah, I'm on episode three. This happened? And I was like, no, that didn't happen. I'm on episode three, motherfucker. And like, so now I've seen it happen, still hit me with the full emotional weight. It's Man, still, I, I still felt it. I can't believe they ruined it for you. It was fucked up. It was fucked up, and I, I won't talk to him again. Ryan. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, Ryan, you should go check out Domestic Girlfriend, though, for real. God damn it, Roger. Quit pimping my coworkers. I'm, a, I'm what you would call a stan. Yeah, all uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm what the kids maybe, call a stan. Yeah, maybe maybe a simp. They're also referring to me as a simp. Yes, you I'm are definitely simping for domestic girlfriend. Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, To Your Eternity is a very good show if you want something that's going to make you cry, and God knows I do. So check it out if that's what your bag is, mm. if you're into I, it. I really am interested in that one, but I am not interested in feeling bad. I'm begging you. I'm telling I'm you, dude. I'm begging you. I mean, I know you'll never find the, the time, so this means nothing, that but I'm begging you. That Violet Evergarden movie, man, I almost didn't make it through that shit. Dog. And it wasn't even that sad. Dog. Oh. Oh. <sighs> All right. Anyway, uh, my good buddy Roger, he's not emotionally stunted. He just doesn't like to feel bad, and that's yeah. fine. The thing, these don't, things don't make me feel bad. They make me feel melancholy, <laughs> which is a combination, I would say, yeah, of but sadness and happiness. When stuff like that, I watch it, and then I start thinking, and it starts stoking the old depression. Oh, baby boy. And I'm like, ooh, this is not a good place for me to be in. It's just stories. It is just stories. All right. But then I find ways to relate the stories to other things. All right. Well, anyway, it's a great show, um, and after I'm glad I caught up because I can officially say it's I still. I do want to check it out because it does sound very mushy. She, dude, I'm begging you to watch it. I know you won't, but I'm begging you to. Uh, if you can get through episode five, the next few episodes have some new characters that are very fun. 
I'll I'll tell you that. Okay. But um, yeah, it's great. Uh, just if you hit episode five and it really makes you feel some stuff, just remember that there's a lot of really fun characters coming up, and they haven't made me cry yet. Okay. They're just fun. Um, but yeah, it's. I'm glad I caught up on it because I can officially say it is still my tippity toppiest, numberiest, oneiest. Uh, I love To Your Eternity. Also, how can you hate anything that has a goddamn theme song by Hikaru motherfucking Utada? Like, holy shit. I didn't know she did the theme for that. Yeah, dude. It whips ass. It's called Pink Blood. I was watching it yesterday, catching up. I was like, huh, I wonder if that song ever went on Spotify. Oh, it did. Today. Put that in the old anime playlist. <laughs> I love I love Hikaru Utada. Yeah, man. My sanctuary. I still... My sanctuary. Now, bam, bam, I was re... Bam, bam. That's what I've been watching. Uh, I re, I'm, you know, been redoing the Mass Effect series now. That the Legendary Editions out. Just beat the third one, platinumed all three of them. Now I got to go through the whole series one more time to do it on insanity uh, difficulty. Anyway, blah blah blah. Um, I'm almost there's through a that bit, damn Resident Evil. You still haven't finished it? No, you man. I've, I've had about two hours a week to play. I got you. And right I did take my two hours this week to play it. Hell fucking yeah! But um, there's a bit on the third game where you go to a place called Sanctuary. And I like with sure. anything, every time I get to anything called Sanctuary, I just cannot help myself. I load up that fucking But I'm playing the My Botanary! My Botanary! <laughs> anyway. My heart's battle fell! Something anyway. Like that. The shit rocks. Um, but I was listening to that, and then I and then I was like, Haley told me a great story about how she used to go to cons and shit. She talks about going to cons like it was fucking Vietnam. Like she legitimately, we were having a discussion about cons and shit, and she was like, "Yeah, I've seen some shit." And I was like, "Damn, girl, it can't be that serious." But she told a great story about how this girl who was dating. Her friend's brother or yes. something. Let me let me interrupt you real quick. Oh, go ahead. Um, the uh, her most popular track, Hikaru Tata, right now is oh, called "One Last Kiss," mm -hmm. and that is going to be the theme song for the newest Evangelion movie. Ooh, yeah, sexy! So there you go. Pretty sweet. I just had to double check and make sure I was not wrong about Whip that. A little ass. But now let's hear about Haley's conic. She was talking about how this girl, who was kind of, you know everyone everyone at the con is at least a little bit awkward but this girl she had a habit of going to whenever they had a karaoke thing and it would be like some kind of contest she would always get up there and always perform simple and clean she was not good at it and when she inevitably lost she threw a straight up tantrum screaming and yelling like she was so upset and I'm like wow sounds like a real party animal <laughs> but so that that's some shit I Apparently, she wants to talk to you about cons because she knows you've been to cons. I love cons. <laughs> I actually quite enjoy cons. I can tell you a funny story about a you've con You've been to right cons now. like outside of Waco, though. You've been to like yes, big cons. Yes, I've yeah. been to big ones. All right. Uh, and one time I did, I did in fact get drunk and accidentally dropped the uh, Rickenbacker base on, uh, on, uh, God damn it, on, uh, Fooly Cooly. Um, what the fuck are you talking about? Haruka. What? Somebody cosplaying as Harka. I and was you drunk. dropped? Yeah, they let me see their base and then I accidentally dropped it on them. Like, were they sitting down or what do you mean dropped it on them? Like, dropped it on their foot? Uh, well, just kind of on their entire body trying to hand it back to them. You just kind of hucked, you threw it at them as well. Yeah, what you're a little saying. bit, yeah. You threw a base at someone. Yes, a little bit. That's fucked up. <laughs> I was very drunk, dude. Did you piss yourself? No, I Again? did not. I did not piss myself, sir. <laughs> this motherfucker pissed himself. He got so drunk one time. I did not do that. Yeah, you oh, did. Oh, you know what? You're right. I peed all over myself. <laughs> I peed. You can you can smell the pee on my legs to this very day. They had to they had to section off that part of the house on South Barbara. <laughs> Stop! I'm getting light. <laughs> They had they had to remove oh, all the bricks. Out. I'm gonna pass it. <laughs> I had to throw out them pants. <laughs> I tried to bleach them and he, he buried them. There's a piss tree growing out there now. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. There you go, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Uh, for my money, I still think my favorite of the Hikaru Utada uh, series of Kingdom Hearts songs is the one from 3, the most recent. Call it recency bias, but uh, I like that song a lot. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, but I did enjoy going to cons. Yeah. So Hell yeah. I had some fun, and I did get very drunk and drop that bass you, on that poor you're bro. A monster. And I'm sorry. You're a monster. If you're listening to this, I'm sorry. I mean, you definitely I broke... I didn't mean to. You broke a very expensive piece of equipment. It was... No, it didn't have any strings on it. was not like it was like modified. Okay. Um, did it have like it, a it did it have that, like a straight up pull string on it and everything? Yeah. Hell yeah, that's whip ass. Yeah, I dropped it on I'm sorry. <laughs> I was drunk. Okay, you, and I'm not a good I'm not good at drinking. Okay. You're not and, you're not and, can 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 confirm. And the anime conventions were the <laughs> only time that was the well, it was for sure the first time that I ever got drunk two nights in a row. Oh baby. Um, and woke up feeling not great, said, hair the dog, baby, let's do it, and just yep. fucked it up. And, yeah, I woke up the next day, I got drunk, and I was drunk until that night, and, you know, whatever. I did it, I lived, and this it is, was fun. This is what we call uh, Roger's party phase. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, then there's Roger's barty phase, where I worked at the bar. Oh, uh, okay. And I had... I um, thought that's I, when you walked around with a lute and sang great yeah. like, oldie, old-timey the, songs. Yeah, my Barty phase. Your Barty phase. No, whenever I worked at the bar and I had unlimited free alcohol offered to me. No, that's fun. Yeah. That's, I, that's not even... Yeah, that's different. I, I did... I supposed to drink on the job, baby. I did, you know, and still do date the... That's the, why you shorted me my chains that one time, you son of a uh, bitch. You know, maybe I had been drinking on the job. I don't know. My The owner of the bar comes to you, hey, man, you wanted anything to drink? Yeah, but uh, so he would do that because he wanted to have a drink and he didn't want to drink by himself. Like That's true. That's that that's guy's true. fucking problem. <laughs> that's true. It's like, hey, man, it's okay to just, like, mix yourself up a little cocktail at the end of a long day. You don't got to do it constantly. Yeah. I'm not telling anybody how to live. I'm probably an alcoholic. I'm anyway. sorry, dude. I really feel bad for shorting you that change. It's I don't give a shit. I can't. Dude. I'm, dude. I'm just. That's just how I am, man. It'll be fine. I never ever would intentionally steal money from somebody. It's all good, baby boy. Let that be known that I would never ever ever even if even if I short change somebody just by accident, either by not giving the correct change or by selling you something and then not giving it to you, or somebody's talking <laughs> to me. I have a minor distraction. That's all it'll take. If I lose my focus... I got the ADD real bad. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is, you Yeah, know? sometimes it'd be like that. Yeah. Well, I know you didn't mean it, sometimes but it Sometimes it'd be me. like that. I mean, if I really gave a shit, I would have walked over there and just drop kicked your ass. Or you could have just asked politely. Like, hey, man. Nah, I would have kicked the shit out of you. Like, this big bass... See, that's the thing. You're so much bigger than me that I would have been like, nah, nah, nah. He did that on purpose, and I got to catch him while he's not looking. <laughs> you know, that was, that was the benefit <laughs> of being big at the bar, is that... <laughs> Not once, not once did anybody ever fucking step to me. Yeah. They didn't even fucking... The goddamn the drunk better, asses son. did not even try. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers. Now, I did have one guy as I was taking him out of the bar. He was just being a dick the whole time. He was talking shit to me, but uh, more, more or less, he was being a dick to the people as he walked by the pool tables and stuff and racked all the pool bottles into the... What an asshole. They knocked somebody's drink over on the way out. Yeah, what a dick. Yeah, I remember sitting at the door with you a few nights and uh, watching you have to turn away people. Like, and look, I've worked retail a while. I will say that I was a good doorman. You were a decent doorman. I'll say this. I've worked retail a long time, and I have dealt with some people who really feel privileged about their position as a customer at this place neat you walked in and you have money you don't even have to have money you can just walk in but i've never seen the level of assholery and privilege of these goddamn college kids who have already been drinking and like you're asking like a group of them for their ids this guy doesn't have their ids and he's a little stumbling he's like nah man you gotta leave and they're all of his friends just like you gonna kick him out you gonna kick him out really come on seriously it's like yeah motherfucker yeah yeah that's how it works yeah because my ass is on the line oh this shit's so fucking funny well i think it's you know i think that part of the problem with the bar industry is there's probably especially in waco not a whole lot of people that that do that you know a lot gets uh to go under the table a lot a lot is lot slides so people don't think it actually fucking happens to them. Yeah. But then you run into me who, you know, for the most part... I ain't fucking around. Yeah. I'm not getting in fucking trouble for you. 
I don't even know you. Yeah. I don't even like you. Yeah, yeah. And now you're pissing me off. You're irritating me. It's even worse now. Yeah. Now you done really fucked up. Yeah. All right, and bye. I, I turned every one of those motherfuckers away all the time. My favorite was when they would, like, name drop the boss or something. I was like, all right, well, you text and tell them to come out here. Yeah, man. Uh, you got to like that. Yeah, like, can you just go get him for me? Mm-mm. No. No. I'm no. watching the door. I'm not leaving this fucking seat right in front of the door. Are you out of your entire mind? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> fuck people. Um, I would ID old people, too. I did not give a damn. I would tell them, you might be, you might be, uh, um, you might be like an officer from TABC or something. I ain't taking mm-hmm. a chance. No, yeah. You show me that ID. Uh, I don't ask for IDs, but when I do, I do always ask for a date of birth when I sell the M-rated games. Oh, okay. It's pretty fun for me. Uh, get folks like kind of gig like laughing and being like, yeah, yeah, uh, blah, 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 this date. 85 or whatever. I was like, I know, man. I just got to type it in. My favorite uh, is what I do is I'll ring up the M-rated game and it'll pop up and say age restricted item, enter date of birth. And I will not just say, what's your date of birth? I will say, this game is rated M for mature for blood and violence. And I just read down the thing, right? And I did that one time. This lady came in. She had a young boy with her. And he wanted to purchase Far Cry 4. Okay. It's a few years ago, obviously. And uh, ring it up. This game's rated M for mature for intense violence, blood and gore, strong language, suggested themes, sexual content, and use of drugs and alcohol. Is that okay? And she goes, the whole time I'm reading down this list, she's just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She was fine with all of it, the sex and the, the violence and everything. Once I hit drugs and alcohol, that's when she goes, oh, no. No, we're going to get something else. She looks down at the kid, and the kid's just staring at me like that. Like, for real, dude? Yeah. And I was like, just doing my job, little man. <laughs> Now, to be fair, the drug part of that game is when you get drugged and then get thrown out of a plane, and it's very fun. Yeah. Very, very fun. Sorry, little guy. You got to stay away from them drugs, though. Yeah, man. Hey, hey. Winners don't do drugs. They need to start putting that logo at the beginning of games again. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, shit. All right. Uh, You got anything else to to ramble about, buddy? Or should we get on out of here? I, I, I can't think of anything. It's fun talking. Yeah. You know, we want to sit here and just ramble forever, but... Sometimes we just got to get yeah, it. I'm oh, I got one. How about the fucking releases from WWE? I uh, know, dude. dude. I was I was actually... Uh, I, the one that blew my mind the most was Braun Strowman. I get that. The one that blew my mind the most was fucking Alistair, because that motherfucker has yeah. been doing those videos and re-debuted last week to cost Big E a match. Yeah. That's a huge deal. Yeah. And I was like, yo, Big E's about to walk out there and cut a promo on nobody. I'm actually kind of bummed out. I missed SmackDown yeah. tonight because well, I really want to see what's going to happen. The reason that he was less happen. shocking to me is because it was obvious at least at one point he wanted his release. Yeah, I get it. Um, or he wanted to go back to NXT. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and the whole issue with Zelina, with his sure, wife. Sure, sure, uh, yeah. Um, so there was... You know, that one was less... It was still was shocking. Yeah. But Braun Strowman? It's wild. This dude that was a, just in the main event. As a former world champion. He was the fucking world He's champion a like a year ago. champion. Yeah. That's huge. He he was... Yeah. And, like, Braun is a good worker, too. Yeah. For a big guy, Braun is surprisingly agile. It's, it's one of those where I truly don't understand what's happening. I've seen a lot of rumors that, like, oh, they're offloading because they're going to try to sell the company or yeah. something. I don't know about any of that. People but Braun who know more seems about like he would be me. a fucking asset. Maybe. I don't know. I do think it's it's one of those where, like, I'm never, I'm not saying ha-ha at his situation. I would never. Yeah. But also, that dude. He made the indie remarks. Oh, he talks so much shit about the indies. Now he's going to have to, like, I don't even know. I hope he does it, and I hope he ties it into his character. Yeah, that'd be great. Because, you know... You got a, Braun, you got a literal monster Braun heel. also isn't, you know, like, he isn't terribly old. Like, he's still well in the, the 30s where you, you say some dumb shit, you make a mistake here. Welcome back there. to the Good Buddies Wrestling Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I brought it up. I, I wanted to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. I, I feel... I still feel for the guy. Yeah. Because... Well. And it just seems weird because Braun is... He is a natural draw. He will move if if AEW decides to pick him up, which I don't know that they will. I don't think they would. No. Uh, if they did, he was he's still a needle mover. I could, people would tune in for Braun. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think he know. should go to New Japan. Oh yeah, he'd whip ass there. New Vader, basically, just walk in and dominate. Yeah. 
I mean, Lesnar went to New Japan, did really well there too. Yeah. I think Braun would be awesome in New Japan. Maybe. Yeah. And they need some of that American talent because uh, most of them guys left. Yeah. Sometimes. And they like and they have not recovered from that. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. <sighs> it's interesting stuff. Interesting stuff to think about. What? Uh, did you see Cody Rhodes' absurd jacket? Homelander. Everybody keeps saying I haven't seen that show, so that means it, nothing to me. No, dude, I've, was, I've seen the I've seen clips of him. It and was I'm like, yeah. blatantly apparent, like, like I, to the to the extent of like, oh, Cody really is the heel. Well, no, oh, he really is self aware. No, because I to me, I looked at it and it looked a lot like the fucking the like beast coat, like you know, Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. It looked like that shit that like he had on before, but now it's all red, white, and blue. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't. I've seen like that next to the Homelander guy, and I'm like, his suit's more smooth, like. This is sure. like a bunch of epilepsy. It's not. Shit. It's not one for one Homelander, but yeah. I mean, it looks like the it like it's the padded shoulders and everything. I guess. Um, so it had me thinking like, oh, he is self aware. Nah. Oh, he does realize. Oh, he's about to get his ass kicked. No. So it's not like I've seen people saying like he became Triple H that quick. Like he's just putting himself. I don't over. think. I, I don't, don't think, think he's Triple H. I don't think that. And I actually don't fault Triple H or anything for the way that he was because Triple H was wildly entertaining. Yeah, but like my thing is like he definitely is. Like he's winning matches. He also has lost several sure high profile matches. Yeah, not as but, often as he wins. Certainly. Yeah, but he just did the America fuck yeah thing. Yeah, I, I didn't care for that. Dude. I still, I still am not over his fucking. My wife is going to give birth to a beautiful white, a beautiful black American princess, and she will have both identities and shun neither. And I'm like, listen, Cody, as a beautiful white, beautiful black American it's princess, so cringy, dude. It's pretty fucking weird what you're doing there. I that get was it. So cringy. But it's gotta be better. And I well, love you know, how I f- love how as soon as he said it, they cut to the white guy in the audience wearing the Black Lives Matter shirt. It was perfect. Oh yeah. Oh, well, such he, an obvious point. You know, Cody was the first American to have an interracial baby. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that was such. It was so cringy, dude. It, it was. It was like, like my skin was like, oh. Did you oh. Did you see that tweet where he got murdered? Some somebody commented on it. Uh, this this lady commented on it. I've got a screenshot of it somewhere. She commented, uh, "I I cried watching it. Uh, wrestling needs more stuff like this." And Cody responds to that tweet saying, "As did I. Thank you." And then she immediately responds to him, "I cried laughing because it was because of how shit it was." <laughs> oh god! So fucking that dude died. Yeah, he had that fight with Andy Gogo. He was already dead. <laughs> yeah, I I really was hoping. I was like I was like, okay, Cody's gonna come out. And they came out in the Homelander gear. I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be amazing. Yeah. If if I were them, I would have had a go-go punch him in the gut and him fucking honk everywhere. That would have been some shit. Cody bleeds great. like crazy. He is not afraid of oh, bleeding. Oh, yeah, he bleeds a lot. So there's no reason for me to believe that he's not be, be, no. beneath honking. I, I I really wanted him no, to I'm not lose. talking. I knew he wouldn't. Cartoony WWE honking or something like that. That's like, too gross. Like, he gets gut checked and he just, you know, loses up some clear spit or something a whole lot of it yeah um, i could see that maybe but I don't in, think in his american uh regal or whatever you call it, his attire yeah it would have been amazing but could it have been, was there been amazing listen everyone wanted him to lose did you think for a second that he would i couldn't tell if he was self-aware or not and now i know that he is not no i didn't think for a second he was gonna lose i knew i knew i wanted it so bad but i was like there's no fucking way it's fucking memorial day weekend this motherfucker is just i just mary mary he's calling himself the american dream he's not gonna do he's not gonna do that shit i just thought that it you know i just don't know how you could be so fucking tone deaf i don't know it's really not the time for the american jingoism (laughs) thing but here we (laughs) are Surprise, surprise. I mean, I'm not off base for thinking that it was extremely tone deaf. It was right? too much. It was way too much, yeah. No, you're right. It was incredibly tone deaf. That's Cody, baby. I guess so, He's having man. his fun. He's having his fun. I guess so. Hey, man. If you got it, flaunt it. I don't know why anybody didn't stand up and be like, hey, Cody, maybe this is a bad idea. <laughs> maybe maybe this is not good. I just imagine like him going over this, talking about it. Kenny sitting there like, um, all right, I'm going to go. Do like the best triple threat match ever. You have fun. Like, yeah. <laughs> God, that was a good match. Well, you know, though. Cody's all about the story too. That like that's that is his thing. Yeah, that's a great, great story. 
Yeah, a really good one, man. Killed Nailed it, it dude. Knocked Nailed it. it out of the park. All right, man. Good Buddies Wrestle Podcast is over. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, let's um, get the hell out of here. All right. So, hey, if you're not into wrestling or any other bullshit we talked about, sorry about that. But if you do want to connect with us on any level, tell us what you thought about Cody's ridiculous outfit or uh, any of the shows we watched. Are you, are you also... Did you think that it looked like Homelander? Are you also watching To Your Eternity? Um, do you also have an opinion on how great Megalobox uh, Nomad is? By all means, let us know. We'd love to talk to you all about it. A uh, number of ways to hit us up the easiest, of course, is on the YouTube page, uh, Rapid Kick Media on YouTube, where we are still posting the uh, episodes there. We do also have the podcast. By all means, please leave us a five-star review. Leave us a comment. Um, those reviews really, like make us pop up more in stuff so if someone looks up anime on their uh apple itunes podcast or whatever uh, apple podcast that we pop up and they'll be like hey who's these guys and then we can then you, you do even more stuff and then eventually we'll take over the world but not before we get some advertisers can't wait to tell y'all about squarespace is that what it's called i don't know anyway uh leave us some yeah. reviews and thumbs um, up uh subscribe to the youtube if manscaped. you don't mind manscaped manscaped hell yeah ah uh, dude you know how much fucking fun I would have doing my JR impression on a Blue Chew ad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I tell you, I got these new Blue Chews. They got me so uh, got me so hard a cat couldn't scratch it. My God. It's a, it's a slobber knocker every night, folks. <laughs> I broke that bitch in half. <laughs> too far. Too far. <laughs> too far. Oh, God. <laughs> you, could, you could rig the ring. You could ding the ring bell with this motherfucker. <laughs> By God, it's blowing everywhere. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. All right. Good Buddies Wrestle Podcast is over. Sorry we talked about an old man's dick for a minute there. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, please, uh, by all means, follow us, up, follow us wherever you want to follow us. All the links are in the description wherever you're watching this. But we do have the uh, Facebook group, the Twitter, the Dead and Zombified Tumblr, um, any number of ways you can hit us up. But again... Uh, biggest ones, of course, are uh, anywhere you can leave us a review for the podcast and on Rapid Kick Media on YouTube. Thank you so much. To our musicians, thank you so much. Uh, Married with Sea Monsters, a.k.a. the Mary Janes, for use of our opening theme song. R.I.P. that band, they no longer exist. But if you want to check out Paper Doll, which is the name of that track, you can find it on marriedwithseamonsters.bandcamp.com. They got a lot of other music on the spoofy. Uh, Spotify. Duh. Uh, we also want to thank uh, our good buddy Haas, a.k.a. Thomas Tastes Better, a.k.a. Dungeon Witch, for the closing theme on the quote-unquote review portion of the show uh, Think uh, on the YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Haas. Uh, that song is called The Buddy's Good. Again, that's Thomas Tastes Better, on well, all one word on Instagram, and Dungeon Witch on YouTube. And finally, a shout-out to our good buddy, A Petty Theft. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, he's really going off. That is how it's pronounced. That was me dropping my mic, you know. Hell yeah. Two P's at the beginning, two C's at the end. Papetti theft for the use of our closing theme on the ramble and on the podcast in general, which we are still calling Sweet Anime Dreams. Thank you so much, Papetti theft. You can find Papetti theft. On Twitter, on Twitter, and on SoundCloud at Papetti Theft, and that about does it. Uh, hey, my good buddy Roger, do you have one to take us out on? Man, I got a couple I can go for. You got any that you want to do? Nah, man, I okay. want you to pick one and rip it. Okay, grip it and rip it. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. So here we go. I'm gonna grip it and rip it, dude. Grip it and rip it, baby. That's how. That's that's how he do the shaman machine. He grip it and rip it. He goes, yeah. uh, thank you so much for ch- chilling with us, good buddies. From all of us here at the Good Buddies Universe, I am your good buddy Brandon. And I- I'm your good buddy Roger, and by God, I'm gushing everywhere. <laughs> no, no. Were well, you like gushing? I tell you, I tell, I tell you folks, I uh, take one of these blue chews, and I mean, I don't even need a hammer anymore when I'm doing my, my doing my handiwork. Just whip it out and start ramming. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jr. <laughs>